Hey buddy, Trankanooka here. Uh, this is the Glass Dragon demo number three. Uh, you know, I broke it apart into three parts because this piece is taking a little while. But, you know, hey, I'm, I'm just kind of hitting it whenever I get time, which isn't a super, a whole lot of time, but, you know, every now and then. Uh, this one's a little bit late. It's been a couple of weeks since my last video, but I think it's going to be well worth it. Here I am blocking in some color. <clears throat> blocking in some color. So first thing I did, I laid down a gradient map over the whole thing. Uh, that's going to give me, it's actually, it's a gradient map layer effect. If you go down to the little half moon shaped thing in your layers panel, and then you select gradient map, and then you create a gradient map, it'll do that. And then you lay it down as an overlay and it'll get you some neat cooled off effects. I'm trying some different text techniques here. Um, I don't usually color line art, uh, uh, in such a fashion. This is sort of a unique uh, experiment. Um, and so what I ended up doing was uh, dropping it in as a multiply layer. I, I ditched some of that blue that I had before and then I started with a multiply layer. It's a bit tricky to, to add color to things like that, um, but it's actually it's good if everything is a little too dark because it's easier to pull things out uh, and, and lighten them up if everything's a little bit dark. Um, we're not feeling like glass yet. We're not going to dig into that. Uh, uh, I tried some things that didn't actually, in hindsight, really didn't make any sense. I don't know why I had that really strong orange kind of a thing happening on the left side of his face there. I think I was just trying to turn the form. And uh, the way to turn the form, of course, is to have, ideally, if you have two lights, um, you can have um, a light coming up from the, the right side and then uh, that depending on the material surface, that would determine how saturated and, and how much that light is going to affect the surface. Uh, but without getting too complicated, basically if you got a light on the right side and it's a different color light on the left side, it's going to feel like the form is a little bit more rounded. Uh, so here I'm kind of, I'm thinking I want the glass to feel like it's red. This guy is actually, uh, uh, he's, he's going to be covered in fire. And, uh, that's gonna be significant because he's he's the plates that you can see will be made of 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 glass and then everything else will be fire and so as you can see I'm 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 really like I lay down a, an overlay layer uh, over all that multiplied stuff that I had done and uh, now I'm darkening in the areas uh, to boost the contrast between the areas that are really lit. And uh, the areas that are still sort of glass plates, and then that's going to give me something to bounce some more light off of to get that glass feel later on. Um, and I, I, I've already decided that I'm going to play down the glass aspect and play up the the lava lamp <laughs> aspect. This guy is going to be uh, he's he's um, he's going to be like covered in just flames and glass and uh and i want him to be really intimidating but i want him to be really beautiful and also very i'm going for something unique i've, I've never seen i'm not looking at reference for this i'm not uh looking at anything that i've seen anywhere else i'm, I'm really trying to pull from my imagination and play around with all the years of of drawing designing dragons that i've, I've done and and I'm trying to make something that's just going to be have its own um, something totally new and unique. And this is a character from uh, a story that I'm writing um, called The Frozen Mountain. And uh, I was going to do it as a comic book, but I just don't have the time um, anymore. So, and also, I like doing these paintings. I get to spend a little bit more time with them, and doing the whole thing as a as a painting would be. Uh, doing the whole story all painted out like this would well i'd I'd have to quit my day job to do it and uh <laughs> i i uh I'm not really ready to do that. I work on some pretty cool stuff with my day job, so I'm not ready to let that one go um but uh i I love doing this stuff too, and uh it just uh surprisingly it's hard to make a living off of your own creation. I did it for about nine years um, when I was doing an indie comic book called Creed, and uh, it was very, I mean, it's its turbulent, you know? You, you never know when you're going to have a good selling 
book or or when it's going to just sell like like badly and then uh, making a living in comic books is really tough so uh, whatever the case I just do it as a hobby now it's it's personal fun it's just something that I like to do uh, so my process here just to kind of communicate a little bit more about what's happening with the drawing uh, I sometimes just to get that richness and the saturation of color and 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 whatnot uh, you'll notice in the beginning it was almost feeling like watercolor because I was going in there you know, I was kind of timid about it and, and I know there are some painters out there that are probably looking at this and thinking my process is jacked and you're probably right <laughs> a lot of what I do is really just trusting an intuition man um, I've spent years drawing and found, found things that I do that I like and then there's other things that I do that I don't like and so what I was doing here to boost up all that saturation and really increase the contrast on the on the fire was to um, to create a copy of everything and then uh, set and then paste that. So if you hit actually uh, uh, shift and uh, uh, what is it uh, control and shift at the same time uh, and then you hit C that'll copy every layer um, and then uh, of course. Uh, 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 control or um, command uh, C will uh, paste it. Is it command? Uh, actually, oh, to copy everything, it's shift command copy, and then that that collects all of your layers and then uh, into the the copy uh, thing, and then you can uh, command paste that to um, to paste it down, and then I just set it to multiply, and uh, what that did was it just doubled up the the richness of the color on everything. And it, it got me a little less timid. Um, you know, I, I'm not too concerned about preserving my line art. And if anything, I want to paint out most of my line art. I like having some of it just because it, I don't know. It's a personal taste. It, it's I'm at my heart. I think I'm I'm still a bit of a draftsman um, from from drawing comic books, and and I just love that. I like that and. And uh, I, I don't want to just do all the fancy little tricks that paint for you, you know. I like getting in there and painting it myself. And I like pulling out those that saturation. And, and really, uh, uh, as you can see here, I'm really turning the forms. Uh, that's where the glass feeling is starting to come in, the high specularity. Um, there's going to be, ideally, I, I don't want to confuse the image so I might not do this, but it'd be really cool, I think, if I could do something where it feels like the inner core of all of that glass is lit, not not the surfaces, you know. I'm using some somewhat generic lighting to make the image feel a little bit more graphic and a little bit more clear. Um, this is by no means any techniques to do anything realistic. If you want to be a realistic painter, don't do what I do. Cause that ain't my thing. I mean, I can, I can do it, you know, whatever. But this is definitely not the same process, man. Um, so what I'm using, I'm actually, uh, this, this was done on the Cintiq Companion. I switched over, um, cause I got it. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. The, uh, Wacom makes a, um, it's a self-contained computer tablet. It's, it's about an 11 and a half inch screen. And uh, it's got, uh, uh, I'm running Photoshop on there. It's a full PC, man. That thing, it, it tears, man. It's awesome. It's, uh, it's, it's powerful, it's fast, and, uh, and it's very versatile. As a digital painter, it's really a pleasure to, to work on. And uh, so I was recording on Camtasia. Some of the Camtasia stuff for it isn't as efficient as my MacBook Pro. Um, I'm not sure if that's a Camtasia thing or maybe it's the version I'm using. Anyways, uh, getting back to the, the piece, uh, here I'm adding a little bit more of that heat. I want the heat, the thing about drawing fire is, or uh, any kind of a light source is that, um, or anything that's emanating light, is that, I mean, you're, it's, it's going to impact everything around it. So, for instance, like the horns, you know, I have to decide if those are going to be Initially, I thought multicolored glass, but then I thought maybe that might get a little confusing. We'll see what happens with the next video. Uh, but then I, I, I kind of have to bounce that warm light off of everything that's in there, and then um, and then and then there you have it. That's that's where it's at right now. It's it's starting to come together. He's starting to feel like a really intimidating fire dragon um, kind of a thing with a lot of cool organic shapes and. 
and uh, there's a sense of wind flow and, and a cool angle on things. Mao's getting a little bit lost, the, the character uh, standing on the bridge in the foreground. So I'm going to have to back a few things off in the next video. But uh, other than that, uh, there we go. And uh, I want to encourage you guys to uh, please support Twilight Monk. Go to twilightmonk.com and pick up a copy of the ebook. It's only a couple of bucks and uh, is a full comic book. Um, and I also want to encourage you to, to subscribe and leave comments. And uh, I really appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.